Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris. If you are new here, uh, welcome. I'm glad you stopped by to check out to see what I have to share. I hope you find something interesting or inspiring. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate your support. Today is Thursday, July 29th. Um, so this is my end of the month wrap up for the month of July. I've got a lot of fun things to share with you this, this month. Uh, if you remember, July was my birthday month, so I was doing a birthday sell called Stitch All the Horses Sell. I was going to stitch on all of my horse projects that I currently had um, in progress, and I added in a few, a few new ones to do as well, so I'm going to share those with you. Before we get started, I just wanted to thank Holly. She commented on my last video, said some really nice things. Thank you, Holly. Um, she also pointed out that the acronym um, SAF, S-A-F, was started by uh, Michelle Gar Garrett, Bendy Stitchy here on Floss Tube. I'll link her channel down below. But she started that acronym and um, she was using it to refer to something that you started and finished all in the same day kind of thing. So technically those Lizzie Kate seasons were not SAFs because I didn't start and finish them in the same day. So, um, But uh, Holly also shared some uh, sites on Etsy that had some really nice horse patterns. So I'm going to uh, include those in the description box down below too if anybody is interested and wants to check those out. So thanks for sharing those, Holly. So um, my stats for the months of, of July, I worked on three existing whips. I had four new starts. I didn't have any finishes or any FFOs. So um, so I'm going to start with my uh, whips that I worked on. And I will uh, mention that um, I did not work on my mini tree hugger cell. So this is the first month. So the first six months I was really good <laughs> and did them all in the month that they came out. But July's I haven't done yet um, for a variety of reasons, partially because I was really enjoying working on my horse projects. But I'll share a little bit more about that later. And then the only other horse project that I didn't work on was the one called the stallion, which you remember I showed in the last video. I had worked on it quite a bit last month. I'd done a number of colors um, and it just hadn't come up on my wheel and, until the end of the month and I was enjoying working on other things. So I decided just to, to leave it for now and I'll, I'll work on it again um, in the future. But uh, So you won't be seeing the stallion uh, this month. But So um, one of the first whips that I worked on, let's put my notes over here. Um, was my Gifts for All stocking. It's a Dimensions kit. Um, I'm stitching on the 14 count Ada that came in the kit with the kit threads. This is what it will look like. Sorry. This is what it'll look like when it's finished. And I've included this one in my Stitch All the Horses cell because obviously there is a horse on this stocking. Um, I will try to include uh, pictures of what it looked like when you last saw it up in a corner somewhere. Um, which reminds me, you might notice I am filming from a different location. This is my work room where I do my sewing um, for my Etsy shop. And I just wanted to try something different today to see how things go. And again, I'll go into a little bit more detail about that later on. So, so anyway, here is the Gifts for All stocking. So I already had the horse stitched, if you saw the before picture. I basically just did some more work on Santa. That's all really that's left is the, that whole empty space there on that left side of the stocking is all Santa's coat. He has a really long, beautiful red coat on. So, And then there is a lot of back stitching and some specialty stitches. I know there's some cording that you need to do for the, the horse's bridle and reins, that type of thing. So it's going to be really beautiful when it's when it's finished. So that was the first whip that I worked on. Um, the next one uh, that I worked on was Hunter and Foxhound. This is a Luca S kit. This is the first Luca S kit I've ever done and I'm really enjoying it. Um, it has beautiful Zweigart fabric in it. The fabric comes pre-gridded which is really cool and it uses anchor threads which are arranged on um, cardboard I don't even know how to describe them. They're not bobbins, obviously, but it's the long strip of cardboard. And so I'm sorry, I don't have... Actually, you know what? Let me just show you something. So they come on... This is a different kit, but this is what the Luca S ones come on, is like the, the cards like this. 
Um, these ones have numbers, but the Luca S kit ones actually have the symbols, which is really nice because you don't have to worry about having a sheet that has what all what colors each of your symbols are. Whereas this one, you have to look at the chart, find the symbol, and then look at the key to find what color the symbol is, and then look for the number. So the way the Luca S kit is set up, it's quite slick and really easy to stitch with. So, so this is the Luca S. This is called Hunter and Foxhound. And this is where I'm at. So I've just completed another column. You can see I'm still stitching with the hoop, which I'm enjoying, but I'm still struggling to get hoop marks out. Uh, I've just resigned myself to the fact that I'll probably just have to get in the habit of washing my stitching when it's finished, if possible. And I'm told that should get rid of those hoop marks. So again, this is full coverage, so it probably won't matter quite so much. So that's the window in the top and that's the tips of the horse's ears and the beginning of the horse's mane that you can see there. So yeah. And then the last, yes, the last whip that I worked on is my Behind the Bit, which is a pattern by White Willow Stitching. I'm stitching this on an 18 count oatmeal Ada with DMC. And yes, this picture has gotten kind of roughed up over time but that's what it'll look like some year when it's finished and here's where it is now and yeah I know that purple in there is kind of weird it's you know obviously the the pattern is created from a photograph so Part of me sort of thought, oh, should I try and change those to like a gray? But I don't, I wouldn't be able to do that to make it look correct. So I just got to keep going. When it's all done, I'm sure it's going to look great. So it just seems a little odd that that purple's in there. So that's coming along. So those were all of my existing whips that I worked on. Uh, so then I have some new starts. So the first one I'm going to show you is... Um, from the the other kit that is so well, that's the name on the bottom of this card is the name of the kit I can't pronounce that Mer Merjica Merjica um, this is called horses I tend to call it grazing horses and again a, quite a nice kit um, it's done with DMC thread and so I got Ada. I like the size because it's going to be 12 by 12 inches or 30 by 30 centimeters when it's completed. So it's kind of a fun size to have something that's square. And then it's, I know Michael's carries 12 by 12 frames, so it shouldn't be hard to find a frame without having to go to custom framing. So I just got a little bit, most of these... Most of these patterns, I, I, I just worked, I think, for one, maybe two days on them, and then I switched to another one. In fact, at the very beginning of the month, I think I was doing one a day, so some of them I don't have a whole lot done, but I did get them started. So, so this is all that I have. So that's the dandelion up in the corner, and the, you can sort of see that sort of there's like a border around the the image of the horses grazing so it's a bit of the border and a bit of the yellow I think there's maybe two different yellows in that dandelion line so far so there's a lot of different colors in there and some back stitching so. so yeah so there's that one and then the other one I worked on was my galloping horses sampler um, it's stitched on a 28 count Monaco that I dyed with a, a denim blue Rit dye, and I'm stitching it with uh, B5200. So that's what it's going to look like when it's done. And it's kind of cool. Like I just thought the horses in this pattern. This this was a magazine that I got um, on the freebie table at StitchCon in 2019. It is July August 1990. 
and yeah, I just really, I thought the horses just looked like they were happy and having fun, but it also has some specialty stitches, and I wanted to try doing some different specialty stitches, so that was part of the reason I wanted to do it as well, so. So again, not a whole lot done. So I've started some of the satin stitching um, along the top. That, uh, that That's the top band, I guess you'd say. And then I've started some of the letters. So that's the A and I've just started the B next to it. So that's gonna be fun. Everything's fun. It's fun, fun, fun. The next one that I worked on was um, an artisy pattern. Um, the artwork is by C.J. Lata, L-A-T-T-A. -T -T -A. It's called Spray Paint. I'm doing it on an 18 count Ada that, um, if you watched the last video, you'll remember that I, I did dye myself just because the pattern is quite dark and I'll put a picture of what it's gonna look like when it's finished. I just thought if I did it on the white Ada, you might see more of that white peeking through the stitches. Um, and so I wanted to dye it kind of a gray color. So I decided when I was dyeing it that I would maybe play around with some dyeing techniques because I thought that's a good opportunity because the, the stitching is going to be full coverage. So if I made a real mess up of it, you're not really going to see it anyway. Uh, but it turned out, I really liked how it, <laughs> really liked how it turned out. So then it's like, oh, do I really want to stitch a full coverage on it? But, but I'm going to anyway. So that is the start of spray paint. There's a lot of dark up in that top left corner. That's where I usually like to start. But yeah, so this one I was enjoying too. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stitch on this one for the rest of the month. And then the last one that I started was White Horse. It's an Etsy pattern that I purchased from Ava's Designs BG. And I'm stitching it on an 18 count white Ada with the called for DMC. And this one I am really enjoying. And this one I've spent the most time on. Um, so yeah, so hopefully I put a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. It's really cool because it's obviously in the picture you can see it's all in different just shades of grays and a little bit of black in there. There's only technically nine colors of DMC, but there are you know, maybe even that many blends. Um, but it makes it really fun to stitch because you don't have 20 or 50 different colors you're looking through. And, you know, because there's fewer colors, you're changing colors less often, I feel. Um, and it's just incredible the shading that she's been able to get with that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, this is one that I ended up, I just kept stitching on because I was really enjoying working on it. So that is all of my projects that I worked on this month, all of my horse projects. I do have a few more days. So as I said, I'm probably gonna work on spray paint unless I change my mind and decide I do want to work a little bit on stallion because that's the only one that I haven't touched so far this month. Um, so I think next I'm going to talk a little bit about haul. Uh, so one of the really, really fun things I ended up doing this month was trying Pattern Keeper. So in my last video, when I did work quite a bit on Stallion, if you watched that, you probably heard me sort of lamenting, I'm trying to color complete because the designer is kind of, um, it's kind of cool that she, he or she provides charts for individual colors. So it makes it really easy to color complete, but it makes it a little bit challenging for counting. Um, and uh, Donna, I'm gonna call you Donna, I'm not sure if that's your name, and I will put Donna's YouTube name on, on the bottom of the screen there. But she had um, suggested about checking out Pattern Keeper, and I, uh, you know, I was aware of Pattern Keeper. I heard a lot of people rave about how game-changing it is, and they love it and I know people have gone out and bought tablets just to use it because unfortunately it's not available yet for ISO devices and I have an iPad um, so I was kind of waiting to see if it was going to come out for iPad but but Donna got me kind of thinking about it because she was saying about how you know it would probably really help with something like the stallion because 
I could use the, the, the full pattern and then just highlight the color, right? Which is a lot easier. And then you've got the, the other colors to count off of kind of thing. So I decided my husband had a Samsung phone that he wasn't using. So I thought, well, you can try the app for free. So I'll just download on his phone, check it out and see. So I did do that. Um, I believe I did it for spray paint uh, for that PDF pattern and um, used it and loved it. It was, yeah, it's everything everybody says about it. So after some discussion with my husband and thinking about it, I did decide to take the leap and I did go out and I bought myself a um, Samsung tablet specifically to use for Pattern Keeper. The other thing that I did was um, through Amazon, I ordered a stand to hold that tablet. Um, which makes it really slick to use and I'll, I'll insert a photo of what the stand looks like and what the stand looks like with the tablet on it um, and that's part of the reason I was enjoying so much stitching on this white horse pattern because the pattern works um, in Pattern Keeper and it's just so easy to stitch using Pattern Keeper. Like now I, I just want to buy patterns that I can use in, in Pattern Keeper. So. Um, so once I got the tablet and I, start, I started to um, load in more of my PDF charts, I did try putting the charts for Stallion in there. And there were some hiccups, which there can be sometimes because they're still developing the app. And I was following all the instructions that they had for troubleshooting some of those hiccups. And uh, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get it to load properly. I, you know, obviously the app works well with some um, like charting software, but I'm assuming the designer that charted Stallion uses something different that isn't compatible at least yet with, with Pattern Keeper. Uh, you know, maybe in, maybe if I try it again in a couple of months, maybe it will work. I'm not sure. But I even tried it a second time thinking, well, maybe something just, you know, I don't know. But it just doesn't seem to recognize the symbols. And you can manually put in your colors, you know, for symbols. But even when I did that, like it, the mock-up was like not right. It, it was wrong. So I've just given up for now on trying to put Stallion in there, which is sad because it would have made it a lot easier to stitch. But I'm still so thrilled because I can use it for spray paint, I can use it for white horse, I can use it for um, my walk with dog, which again was a challenging pattern to stitch because there's so much confetti and you spend so much time looking for the next symbol kind of thing. So it's gonna be so sweet. I haven't used it yet, but to, you know, you just highlight that symbol and it's so easy to find. So. Um, I am so happy with that purchase and, you know, as everybody says, I can't recommend Pattern Keeper enough. They have done an amazing job and I love stitching and stitching, you know, is an escape and a way to relax, but using Pattern Keeper just makes it fun and even more relaxing. So I can't say enough about it. So I'm pretty thrilled with that. Um, the other piece of haul that I purchased this month um, is a chart from Awesome Pattern Studios. So I'll put a picture of what the chart looks like. Um, so it's a picture of a Whippet. We used to have a Whippet um, a number of years ago, uh, right around the time that my youngest daughter was, was born. And I, I really like the patterns from Awesome Pattern Studio. I've done one of theirs before, but I've looked at a lot of them and favorited a lot of them and will probably buy more over, over time. Uh, but the colors of that, like the colors are beautiful, but they're not really the colors that I have around my house. So I wanted to change them to something a little more, I don't know if natural is the right word, but um, so I did a color conversion and these are sort of the colors that I've changed it to. So sort of browns and beiges and grays kind of thing. Uh, so the really, really fun thing I discovered is the, 
the PDF pattern from Awesome Pattern Studios works great on Pattern Keeper. Uh, but you can go in and edit the the colors. So you 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 know you can just select the symbol and put in what color you want. And there's a number of different threads you can use. Uh, I can't remember what they all are specifically, but DMC obviously is one of them. So it made it really easy just to, like, you know, I, I originally started out by pulling all the colors that were recommended in the chart and taking sort of like the color families and putting them together and deciding these ones I'm going to keep, these ones I'm, I'm going to change. So, you know, all of these purples I'm going to change to grays and all of these um, pinks I'm going to change to browns sort of thing. And so I was liking how my colors were looking, but I had done this before with their, with the previous pattern I, I had purchased from them and it was hard to know how things are going to look right. And a lot of people had suggested things like, you know, coloring with pencil crayons, but I didn't have, I didn't have enough pencil crayons and all the different shades of greens and blues I was doing on the other one. So you just sort of start stitching. And, and of course I did find I had to modify things as I went along because all of a sudden you realize, Oh, those colors are too close to like too close in, in hue. And I didn't realize they were that close together on the pattern. So you don't get a good definition. So I'll have to change this one to something else, but, but it was still doable. But with pattern keeper, I was able to go in and put in all my substitutions and it creates a mock-up of what it's going to look like when you're finished. And I'm like, well, okay, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I want it to look like. So I was really excited about that and I thought that is really cool that you can do that, that you can go in and uh, so it makes doing a color conversion a lot easier because you can see what your color conversion is going to look like when you're done. Um, so let's see, was there anything else that I was going to say about Paul? I guess um, I've kind of blended future start because my Whip It pattern is my future start. Um, and I have one more piece of haul I want to show you. Um, I'm going to actually insert a little clip in here to tell you a little bit more about that and then I will come back. Okay, so this was my best haul <laughs> for the month of July. This is Ollie. Say hello to the floss tube people, Ollie. Ollie is a whippet. He is 11 weeks old yesterday. We got him when he was 8 weeks old. And he's doing really, really well. He's kind of sleepy right now. It's time for a nap, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, he's not normally this quiet. But I don't know if I can show you. He's really grown since we got him. But there's how big his body is. But yeah. So we got him just a few days before my birthday. So he wasn't technically a birthday present, but I call him my birthday present. He's a present for the whole family. It's been a little while since we've had a dog, so everybody's enjoying having him around. He's a lot of fun to play with. He's really smart. He's learning stuff really quick. But yeah, he's ready to go have a nap, aren't you, buddy? So say goodbye to the people. I'll put a few pictures of him in at the end, and I'm not sure. I'll see if I have any videos that I can tag on. And uh, I'll share them with you each month as he grows and you can watch him get bigger. All right, you say goodbye. Say goodbye, Holly. Say goodbye. Okay, how fun was that? How exciting. <laughs> Our family just grew this month. So, um, Ollie is adorable. We love him. Um, he, you know, he is so wonderful. He loves people. He loves kids. He seems to really like other dogs. Um, uh, so yeah, we are just thrilled and so happy to have him in our little family now and uh, are really enjoying him But he's growing he's growing too fast too fast, but that's what puppies do I guess so So that is the other reason that I purchased the Whippet pattern from awesome pattern studios because um, I kind of wanted to mark um, Ollie's entrance into our life. So he is our second Whippet that we've had um, I think I've had four dogs in my adult life. Um, two of them were like collie type crosses and then two whippets. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's sort of how that came about is, uh, I, I wanted to mark his, his, the year that he came into our family. So I look forward to stitching that one, um, because it's a whippet and I like Awesome Pattern Studios patterns and I get to stitch it using, um, my new tablet and the 
Pattern Keeper app. So all good things. So can't wait. Can't wait to start that one. Might be sooner than later. Um, so yeah, I think as far as haul goes, that's everything that I wanted to share with you. If anybody has any questions about anything, just feel free to ask down below. Um, as far as my plans go, um, always the other reason I maybe didn't get as much stitching done this month. Anybody that's had a puppy recently probably realized that um, it's quite a bit of work. Uh, can't just go and sit down for an hour and stitch away when you've got a little puppy running around trying to get into things. So it'll get easier as it gets bigger. So um, I'll just sort of wait for that time to maybe make more progress on some of my projects. But in the meantime, I stitch a little bit here and there. Sometimes it's just a, you know, 20 or 30 stitches, but every stitch counts, right? Um, so I think I am going to try to go back to my original um, protocol, whatever you call it, uh, where I'm going to select two focus projects for the month of August. And then each weekend I will spin my wheel and just randomly pick a project to work on for the weekend. Um, Ollie is the other reason I am filming down here for now. My daughter was watching him upstairs while I was setting up and I just knew if I tried to film up there with him awake, he would probably be nosy and trying to get into stuff because I usually up there set it on the table and around me on chairs. So he's tall enough that he'd be able to get up and get at some of that stuff. Um, or I also knew if I tried to film and he was in his crate, he might wake up and then he would start, you know, whining and whimpering and you would hear that in the background. So, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure uh, next month whether I'll still film down here again or if I will try filming upstairs, but we'll see. Um, this obviously isn't quite as nice of a background as my, my kitchen. It's just a blank white wall behind me because I haven't really hung anything on the wall or I haven't painted down here. It just used to be a playroom when my kids were little, so, and I just have my inexpensive shelves with my storage for some of my stuff up there, so... Um, so yeah, so those are my plans. Um, so yeah, as far as my stitching goes, that is the end of that segment of my video. So if you're just here for the stitching, um, I will see you next time. If you're curious, um, the next two things I'm going to show you are um, a little bit of a sneak peek into my Etsy shop and um, a craft from the past. So let's start with the Etsy shop. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I was trying to make some bags, um, before we got Ollie, because again, I don't have the big blocks of time like I used to before puppy. Uh, so before he came, I had purchased some really fun fabric that felt summery and beachy to me. Um, so I made a few bags to put in the shop if anybody was looking for something summery. So it's this really fun Riley Blake fabric. It's called Riptide. So these are the sharks with a blue background. And then I've got this sort of wave fabric on the inside. So these are the vinyl front. Again, just so you can see the vinyl front project bags. And then I also um, have the same sharks, but with this cream background. And then the inside fabric is just these little sharks swimming in a row. So I made one of these for myself as well, because this fabric just makes me smile. It's cute. So those are some summery ones. And then I also wanted to get a jump on things and start stitching some Halloween related bags um, in case people were looking for something um, if they're starting to think about fall stitching. So, so these are a few that I have. This is a really cute unicorn fabric so the unicorns all dressed up in Halloween costumes and then I've just paired it with this black fabric with these bats on it and this fabric's really fun because those bats actually glow in the dark so there's that one and then I found this really cute Wonder Woman fabric cutest pumpkin in the patch and I've just paired it with a gray gray fabric with some white stars on it. And then this one is just the reverse. So 
So those are a few of those. I have a couple more that I'm going to make and try and get up in the shop. Those ones are already up in the shop. Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you is I am trying out a couple of new sort of floss organizer um, type products. Both of these are created using a pattern made by um, or that I purchased from an Etsy shop called The Bob and Jar and I will link her shop down below. She says in her listing that um, you're not allowed to share the pattern but if you make the um, the pouches or the the folders using her pattern please just give her credit but you can sell them you know in, in as long as you're not mass producing them anything like that. So the first one that I tried making, um, I think she calls it a mini floss holder. Uh, so it's like a little, sort of a little square folder. And then when you open it up, it's got the felt pad over here that you can lay your threads on. And then it's got the zipper pouch here that you can put your flosses in and then actually even has pockets in here and here so you can even use this for smalls right if you if you're doing ornaments or whatever because you could easily put a small pattern in there and a piece of fabric kind of thing and then your flosses and then this is just a nice thing if you set it on your table side you can set your stray threads on there just to keep track of them I'm not sure if I love this elastic. I think the way I've made it, I would need to make it a little bit longer than what the pattern called for because you can see it kind of squishes these edges, but in a way you almost don't need it. Like it stays shut fairly nicely, but I guess if you had a lot of stuff in there, you might want something. So I'll have to tweak that a little bit, but so I don't have any of these in the shop yet. Um, again, I just need to find time to do some stitching. So. Um, the other one I made, she, um, the Bob and Jar, she calls it a uh, fold over floss holder. Or that, I'm calling it a fold over floss holder. I think she called it a fold over stitching pouch. Or I, I forget, I apologize. Um, I forget the exact title of what she calls it. But um, I modified it a little bit because she included a zipper, like a little zippered pouch in the the folder and I wanted to make more floss bobbin holders so I'm gonna put a picture or a few pictures sort of in up here of what um, what my finished product looked like And I did, I did put one in my shop, but it, it sold within a few hours. So um, I do hope to make more of those in the future as well. So if anybody's any feedback on those, um, if that's something that you think is really cool, or if you don't think, you know, it's something that people would be interested in, um, feel free to give me some feedback. Um, I'm always looking for um ideas i'm always looking for what the market is looking like is it what people are searching for so feel free to to leave some advice so that's a sneak peek into the etsy shop uh, my last thing i'm going to share is a craft from the past and since i was talking about awesome pattern studio uh since i was talking about doing the color conversion using pattern keeper i thought it would be fun to show you my previous um, project that I stitched um, that was an awesome pattern studio. So this was one that I did um, quite a while ago, I can't remember exactly when. Um, Ginger Gerald Stitcher and Buckeye Stitcher, both here on Floss Tube, did a stitch along and it was a hedgehog stitch along because they both had the same um, Riolas hedgehog pattern that they both wanted to stitch but they invited people to join in with any hedgehog pattern that you wanted to do. 
and I had uh, been looking at patterns on Awesome Pattern Studio and they had a hedgehog one. So I thought, oh, that's a fun opportunity to try out, you know, stitching one of their patterns and I can join in on the sow. So that is what I did. Um, so this is my hedgehog in the hedgehog cell. This is an Awesome Pattern Studio pattern. Um, and again, this one I did do a color conversion on. Like the Whip It, it was done with a lot of pinks and purples. Um, but I really like blues and greens, so I sort of switched those out. Um, and yes, if I had Pattern Keeper at the time, it would have been so much easier, <laughs> easier to do that. But I did eventually make it work. So, um, and yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, this was the first time I did a hoop finish. Uh, it's not as tight as I would like it to be. I did stitch some felt on the back. Um, but yeah, it's just a cute little pattern that I'll probably eventually hang up in this room somewhere, someday, if I decide to do that. So, so yeah, so that is my craft from the past. So that is everything I have to share today. I'll put in some pictures at the end, um, some close-ups of some of my projects I was stitching on, and um, I'll maybe put in a few uh, pictures and or videos that I happen to have um, of Ollie so you can um, see a little bit more of him uh, in the real world. <laughs> anyway, thank you everybody for stopping by. Um, until next time, I'll see you. Bye.